right, hey everybody. Today we're gonna talk about who's throwing the wrench into a paralegals organization. Now, what does that mean? Well, when I say wrench, I mean messing it up. Who's messing up the paralegals organization in the office? So let's talk about some of these ways. Of course, I'm referring to the attorney. Um, and so what do you do about it when you've organized everything and then the attorney comes and starts doing things that mess it all up? Well, there are some solutions to it, okay? Now, when I walked into one attorney's office, he had papers all over the desk, well, actually two, two attorneys in the same firm, and wanted to have, one wanted me to help him get organized, which we did, and then he put it all in nice neat piles. Within a day or two, it was all messed up again because that's how he is insisting on working. So that was wasted effort, you know, but I did it because he wanted to and we, we, we listed everything out and all this. It was a waste of time, really. But I worked with him to try to solve his problem with organization. The other attorney had files all over. would never give him an original. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but documents will come in the mail and I will give the attorney copies always so they're on top of everything, but they end up not looking in the inbox. Some do not look. And so he wanted to have everything filed on his, in separate folders on his desk. Why? So that if a client called, he could be on top of everything. Now I use another method that tells me exactly where I am in a case but he wanted documents. So we did that. It, you know, it was like filing in two separate places, which he wanted it, so I did it. As long as it kept him out of the filing cabinet, that's a good thing. So we did that. It kind of worked, kind of didn't. Um, not the most organized person in the world, this guy. So you know, as long as they're not taking the client files and hiding them in their office, which they like to do. So if the, the attorney is walking out of the office and you see that person with a file under his or her arm, ask them, what file is that? Now they may not like that, that's too darn bad. You're the one responsible for that. Just ask, is that the so-and-so file or what? And they'll say, oh, this is the, you know, Williams file. That's my last name. It's the Williams file. So mark down that they're taking the Williams file home with them. Now, you know, if you can only track this so far because if they come in on the weekend, you're out of luck with knowing what they have, what they don't, but you try your best. Um, it's good to, if they don't mind you being in their office when they're gone, to look around and see what cases, case files are in that office and mark it down that they're in, thinking about a legal brief, they wanna look through the file. You can't take everything out of there and refile it. They need to have some things in there, but you can, if it looks like it's getting out of control, you can ask, Is there, are there any files I need to take out and file for you? And they may say yes, and that way you know it's back in where it should be. Um, look in the file to make sure if the attorney took a lot of and unhooked a lot of documents from the two prong um, file holder, the document holder, that, that's how we do it in legal. That um, you hook everything back in and make sure it's in order. Yeah, I know it's a pain, but that's what we do. Uh, so, the mail comes, you see original documents in there from the court that they're in, you know, advising the attorney of deadlines that are up for a, a case. Well, you have to calendar those deadlines, obviously, and you have to read what comes in the mail and then make a copy for the attorney and write the word copy at the top so that you know just by looking down it's a copy it's not an original and put the original in the file but before you punch holes in it if you're new to the this um to the law firm you're new to to being in a law firm ask somebody is it okay to punch holes in this don't think you can punch holes in everything okay be very mindful that you don't know what you're doing yet as a new person you have to ask people is it okay to punch holes in this Be you know they they know you're new and they should be willing to just answer some simple questions for you 
Um, when you go into a very small office, sometimes they'll want you to do the invoicing, the billing to the client. And so you've got to work on software to do that special software. And then you've got to, when the client pays a monthly payment, you've got to make sure that's shown on that invoice, right? Well, if the payments come in on the weekend, your attorney may, on a Saturday, if the bank is open, go deposit that money and not even think about the fact that you need to know that those payments came in because those clients will know they sent a check in or they paid um, online and all of a sudden it's not showing on the invoice. You have to train your attorney that if they make out a deposit slip, that they have to copy that deposit slip and give it to you. Okay, because otherwise you're going to get a lot of nasty phone calls from the client saying, hey, I paid. So that happened to me, by the way. Um, when you go out to lunch, it's just the way it is. You're waiting for an important phone call. So they decide to call at 12, 1210 and you left at 1205 and the attorney gets the call, but doesn't tell you that they spoke to the client. When you come back from lunch, ask the receptionist if there is one whoever answered the phones, did so-and-so call? If they say yes, your attorney took the call. Okay, now go to the attorney, find out what happened. You are a detective as a paralegal. It's important to follow up. It's not where you sit back and you wait for the attorney to come to you and, and just give you information uh, and reports to you. You follow up as a detective. Um, the last thing is when you go to the file and you know, you pretty much know what's in your file. You know, when I start in a new law firm for me, it's new to me. I make a list of all the files in the cabinet so that I know it's there or it's not there. You know, I know, I get to know work there for a while that yes, I have filed certain documents in there. Maybe it's a deposition that I've put in there and um, maybe it's something else, some other type of documents, a, a motion came in and I filed. So I will remember that. And all of a sudden, the deposition is, is missing. I go to look for it because I'm gonna do a summary of the deposition for the attorney and it's gone. Where is it? It's probably in the attorney's office. So if the attorney says, where's the deposition for so-and-so? and you give it to the attorney, mark it down just on a, a sheet on your desk that you keep for, for times like this. Deposition in the attorney's office, you know, because you'll know where everything is. And then more times than not, the attorney will have it in the office, come out in a panic and ask you where something is and it's in there. I've, I, my attorney and I used to bet lunches that okay you're gonna we're gonna go to lunch you're gonna pay for it if that is in your office and i'm telling you 10 times out of 10 it was in his office so he would get all frustrated i'd say okay we have to go to lunch and so we were like brother and sister and we had worked twice together so there was a, a good like, sister brother relationship there and you know just like just like you would act with a sibling so this happened every law firm with every single paralegal that I've ever talked to this craziness of looking for stuff when it's right in in the attorney's office um, be aware that you know you're responsible for it that's what unnerves us as paralegals because people look to us to find it and they ha they've had it all along it's yes it's highly annoying it's it's the way it is and when I worked in marketing in a corporate uh, in a division of a global company in New Jersey, my two v vice presidents decided to, they had to go to Europe. They were going to Russia, to Italy, and other places together to meet with people that gave us business. And um, took they took the entire correspondence file for one particular client, took it to Italy, and lost it. We had to try to recreate that because we did have a lot of cross filing in that um, in our department. So I was able to recreate some of it, uh, but not, not all of it. 
and they, they felt really bad about it, but that's really crazy. All of that should have been copied beforehand, but they probably didn't think of it, and I wasn't in the office when they were probably on their way to the airport and they just grabbed it. So yeah, they lost the whole thing. That's really not good because it could go into anybody's hands and there's, you know, sensitive information in that correspondence that you don't want to fall in the wrong hands. So that was not a bright move and they knew it, you know, and that attorneys do this and remove things and then don't return it and then look to you as if you have it somewhere hidden. So understand, try to keep track of everything to the best of your ability and you can't always do it <laughs> because it's just not humanly possible but you try you play detective you are a detective as a paralegal all right so any questions or comments or if you're watching this and you are a paralegal then please comment below and let me know some of the things that have happened but what were the solutions not to go into uh, snarky whining comments I want to know what were your solutions if this happened to you okay because that helps people all right have a great day um, don't forget to get on the wait list for the paralegal inner circle class that will launch in the fall so um, we're running two different groups right now th uh, for the class and um, and then we won't launch again till this fall we just had a launch in May and June and in January. So we'll have our final launch in the fall and that will be it for the year. And so don't miss that one. Get on board because it is a fantastic class. Go to the website paralegalcoffeetalk.com and look for the Parallel Inner Circle class info. I'll post a link below as soon as I'm done here. Also go to the website to check out podcasts that are there. You need to listen to some of those podcasts and look at the vlog when you look, when you get on the site. There are many um, uh, vlog posts and blog posts there for you to uh, take note of and you can, uh, besides all the videos I do here. So have a great day and I will talk to you in tomorrow's live video. Any questions, comments, post them below. Be glad to help you. Oh, step number one in this, if that you're new to the field, is always to pick up my book, Legal Break-In, on Amazon. It's in Kindle or paperback format. And you know, you could start reading it today if you get the Kindle format. That is really important to you to give you an insider's view. And I go into not only, I go into, oh gosh, I think there's 20 short chapters, 97 pages, and I go over the basic skills you need to have before you can break into this field, okay? So have a great one and I'll talk to you in tomorrow's